Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Bigfoot vs. Mothman vs. My Dad by Scott Donnelly the drive was long. My legs were cramped and my stomach was rumbling. The sun had already set behind us when we entered Appalachia, so I was confused as to why my dad hadn't stopped at a diner for burgers or soup or something yet. I mean, I'd heard his stomach rumbling too. Our guts seemed to be in sync with one another, battling for which one could make the loudest, most sudden rumble. There was definitely something humorous to it, but when it was all said and done, I was just hungry. We were just hungry. Dad, are we ever going to stop for some grub? I asked him. I'm about to start peeling the leather off these cabin seats and using them as tortillas to wrap up some of this old gum that's stuck underneath the dash. Ew, uh, d don't do that, son, my dad said. Sorry, I'm hungry too. I'm just on a tight schedule with this shipment and we're making great time. I looked out the window. It was dark, and all I could see were brief, highlighted portions of the woods that sandwiched the road we were on. I hadn't seen a sign in a while, not since we crossed a bridge about 15 minutes earlier, and even then I was too focused on my hunger to pay attention to what it said. Where are we? I asked. West Virginia, my dad said. He checked a meter on the brightly lit dash in front of him. We only have 180 miles to go until we reach the drop-off point. My dad had been driving 18-wheelers since before I was born. I only traveled with him during the summer months when school was out. He was a pro, so I hated to question his authority and knowledge on the job. But when it came to food, he seemed to really be dropping the ball. Dad, I'm hungry. Can we please stop for dinner? I begged him. My dad sighed and finally gave in. Okay, fine. I've traveled this road before. At about 20 miles or so, there's a small diner that has the best BLTs known to man. We'll stop there for some soup and sandwiches. Just the mention of food made my stomach erupt with noisy excitement. Satisfied, I looked back out the window to mindlessly stare into the dark blur of passing forestry. But something quickly caught my eye in the truck's side mirror. There was a quick flash of red lights that came and went. At first I thought it was another car behind us, but there were no other headlights on the road. We were alone. Did you see that? I asked. See what? The, the red lights in the mirror. My dad looked out his side mirror and squinted but didn't see anything. He shook his head. No, son, I don't see anything. As he turned to face me to reassure me that he didn't see anything and that my hunger had now just teamed up with my eyes in a sick game of trickery, his face illuminated in a bright red light. His eyes went wide and he gasped. I snapped my head back to face the window, but whatever was there, whatever had emitted the red glow, was gone. My dad slammed on the truck's brakes. The entire 18-wheeler jolted and thrusted forward, skidding along the dark, winding road, and then… It took a couple minutes for me to snap out of my haze and realize I was hanging upside down in the cabin of the truck. I looked over and saw my dad also hanging upside down like a bat, still strapped into his seatbelt. He was in shock. Dad, are you okay? I panicked. My dad looked over at me in a daze. He nodded and then smiled when he saw that I too was okay. We, uh, we need to get out of here, he said. My dad carefully unlatched himself first and then helped me out of the cabin. 
Once we were on our feet, we stood back on the road. Small pockets of flames on the truck provided enough light for us to see the damage, and it was severe. The entire truck, cabin, and cargo was upside down. My dad took a deep breath and put his hands on his hips. Ugh, how am I going to explain this? He said. I noticed the back doors on the cargo had broken off, and a large cage was halfway hanging out. I squinted and moved closer to it. What were we transporting? I asked him. The closer I got to the back of the truck, the more I realized it was an animal cage. My dad joined my side. I don't know, he said. It was a private, independent shipper. I'm not legally allowed to ask questions about it. I accept the transport job, get paid, and make the delivery. Up close with the metal cage and in the flickering lights of the flames, I saw brown tufts of matted hair that had been caught on some of the bent and broken iron bars. W was it a bear? I asked. My dad shrugged. Then, out of nowhere, a loud shriek erupted from the sky. My dad and I looked up. Something dark flew over us, veiled by the night. Was that a bird? I asked. My dad shook his head. That thing was too big to be a bird. My dad trembled. He grabbed me by the arm. C come on, we have to... The shadowy beast from the sky swooped in again and landed in front of us. At first I thought it was a man who had learned to fly, but when it stood up from its landing stance, I saw how tall it was. It stood over seven feet. It was covered in dark feathers and it extended two enormous wings out to its sides. Its eyes, large, luminous, and blood red, glowed on us as if we were in the spotlight of a dark and twisted show. I'd seen enough monster documentaries on TV to know what we were in the presence of. It was the legendary Mothman. The creature waddled eerily toward us, emitting strange clicks and shrieks as it did so. My dad held me tight, protecting me from the monster. As the creature inched closer, a menace building within it, we were hit with yet another sudden left turn. A howl, primal and chilling, erupted from the woods behind us. Still in my dad's tight, protective grip, we spun around to see another monstrous sight. A second creature, just as tall, covered from head to toe with shaggy brown hair, just like the matted tufts I'd seen on the broken cage, lumbered out of the woods and onto the road. Once again, my knowledge of legends and myths kicked in, and I realized that my dad had been paid to secretly transport a living, breathing Bigfoot halfway across the country. We stood there in the middle of the road next to a flaming tractor trailer as Bigfoot and the Mothman closed in on us from opposing sides. We were trapped, doomed in a way reserved specifically for fantastical fiction. But then something happened that neither my dad nor I expected. When the Mothman realized Bigfoot was creeping up on the other side, there must have been a territorial instinct that took over. It shrieked and took flight lifting up and over us and then dove down at the hairy beast. Bigfoot looked up and roared. The Mothman collided with Bigfoot, but he was too strong. He grabbed a hold of the winged creature with both hands and tried to hold it still. The Mothman shrieked within Bigfoot's grasp and then used its wings to pound on him from both sides. Bigfoot dropped the Mothman and backed up. The Mothman tried to take flight again, but the hairy monster wasn't having any of it. He reached forward and grabbed a hold of one of the Mothman's gangly legs and was lifted up into the air with him. My dad and I stood back and watched in disbelief. Are Bigfoot and Mothman fighting in the sky? My dad asked. They sure are, I said. The Mothman was able to shake Bigfoot loose and he fell back down, smacking the road with a great deal of force. Mothman then swooped down again and snapped its talons at Bigfoot, who was trying to stand to his feet. Between the guttural roars and high-pitched shrieks, my dad and I were mesmerized and focused. So when the Mothman swooped in again and one of its wings accidentally smacked my dad in the side of the head, he was completely unprepared for it. My dad was flung backwards about 20 yards and disappeared into the darkness of the woods. Dad! I screamed. 
As I desperately waited for him to emerge from the tree line, hoping he was okay, the two legendary monsters continued to battle it out on the road behind me. Then, in slow motion, highlighted by the pulsating flames, my dad emerged from the woods. He materialized from the dark, brooding and enraged. His eyes dipped and he held a vengeful smirk on his face. I hadn't seen him with a look of determination on that level since my Uncle Don said that he couldn't out-eat him at the last family reunion. My dad stormed back onto the road. I moved out of his way. He rolled up his sleeves and then jumped right into the monster brawl, landing his first punch on the top of Mothman's head. My dad wasn't messing around. He fought dirty. He pulled Bigfoot's hair. He poked Mothman's eyes until they flickered out like flashlights losing battery power. He stomped on Bigfoot's feet and plucked at Mothman's feathers. My dad heroically threw punch after punch, bravely landed kick after kick. When my dad woke up in the hospital the next morning, I was right by his side. His eyes were swollen, his neck was in a brace. Several of his teeth were missing and his lips had to be surgically placed back on. Son, he moaned from the hospital bed, are, are you there? I'm here, Dad, I said, placing my hand on his bandaged arm. How you feeling? I asked. I can't feel my legs, he said. The doctors said you'll get the leg sensation back in a day or two, I said. I have a bit of a headache, too, he added. You ended up with 14 concussions, I told him. My dad forced a toothless smile. Did you like how your old man took care of those two monsters? <laughs> I still got it after all of these years, he proudly winced. Yeah, I hesitantly said. Actually, after you rolled up your sleeves and hit the mothman on the head, it was all over. They pummeled you, Dad. Everything you told the doctor when you came in here last night about the fight didn't happen. Actually, they're claiming your injuries were from the crash. My dad enraged again, tried to sit up in bed. His machines started beeping loudly at him. I tried to get him to sit back and relax. Uh, that's nonsense, my dad exclaimed. They were there. You saw them. You saw the fight. I, I did, I said. That's why I called Uncle Don. I told him everything. He didn't like the way those creatures beat you senseless. He's already planning a revenge mission for when you're better. Don't worry, Dad. You get a second go at these guys. My dad lay back on his pillow and smiled another toothless grin. Then he winked, or at least I thought he did beneath all the swelling around his eyes. He said, Just wait until you see your old man in action again, son. I cringed, already knowing what a second round would look like for him. And this hospital wasn't equipped to deal with that. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at weirddarkness.com slash listen.